Hey guys, Woodruff here. So we got through acute musculoskeletal problems and now we're going to get into chronic. Um, so when we get into chronic, we're going to be talking here about a lot of the um, problems we've already talked about, but when they get chronic, like chronic back pain, um, this will also include some spinal disorders, all of the arthritis and osteoporosis. So um, yeah, this is going to be um, looking at some of the disease process we talked about more and that can then become more of a long-term problem. So the difference here is, is when we talked about the acute musculoskeletal disorders, we were more focused on like priority. What do we need to do first? And there's priorities for chronic too, but here we're going to be more focused on um, teaching, long-term treatments, management, how to make it better. Because if it's chronic, it means that there's not a cure, but we can make it better or make their life more livable or more manageable on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're um, you know studying this, you want to be more focused on, less focused on like, there's less maybe life or death stuff here. There is some um, but there's less life or death stuff and more just about um, managing something that's a long-term illness. So let's dive in. And we're going to dive in if I can ever get the slide to progress. We're going to start with chronic back pain. So this um, video will just be about chronic back pain. And then we'll get into, I believe the next one will be degenerative disc disease and then all the arthritis and end with osteoporosis. So, um, but I'm going to split them up into little pieces to make them a little bit more manageable to watch. Um, so let's talk about chronic back pain. So we've already talked about acute back pain. So chronic back pain is going to be very similar to acute back pain um, and where it happens that it usually is in the lower back and, um, you know, that the main symptom is pain, uh, but the differences are going to be the amount of time it lasts. So back pain that lasts longer than three months is usually um, considered a chronic back pain. And usually it's progressive where acute back pain is from like a sudden injury, things like that. Chronic back pain is usually from a different problem. Like when we talk about arthritis coming up or disc disease, it can be a result of that. Um, it also can be from osteoporosis, um, having any sort of weak um, if there was a prior injury or just a chronic strain for someone who's obese or maybe often pregnant. Um, also kind of in chronic back pain, a term you'll want to be familiar with that you might see in some patient's history is what's known as spinal stenosis. And um, stenosis is a narrowing. And so for spinal stenosis, it's a narrowing, uh, narrowing, it sounds weird when I say it, narrowing um, of the spinal cord. Um, so this is a common cause of chronic low back pain, um, and it can lead, it, it's, when we talk about degenerative disc disease, um, they have a lot in common. So, uh, but just know that this is another word you might um, hear talked about or something that you might um, have uh, see on a patient's history. And you can kind of see it in this picture. Here's a normal spine, and here's one that has stenosis or narrowing. So our assessments and questions, diagnostics, and things like that are going to be very similar. The diagnostics, pretty much the same. There's that straight leg raising test, um, which again, that's the one where we put the legs up and we um, have them lower them. And if they feel that pull, that tug, that pain as they're lowering them in their lower back, it's usually a sign for, um, you know, a, a stress or issue in the lower back. Um, we may do CT MRI just to make sure there's no disc disease or severe injury, et cetera. Um, but most of our assessments are going to be around pain and um, I'm looking for other symptoms because, you know, so far we've talked about acute and chronic back pain as just like being a pain issue, but there's other issues that can come, especially when we start getting into spinal stenosis or when we talk about degenerative disc disease next. Um, there's things that when there's issues with the spine, especially in the low back, that other issues can start coming up. So I really want to see is pain their only symptom or are things getting worse? Um, so for pain, how long has it lasted? Did something happen right before? Where does it hurt? Like we mentioned, it's usually the low, the low back. Um, what makes it better or worse? See how it's limiting them. Remember, with a lot of back pain issues, it's not just about, hey, my pain is this number. How is it affecting them day to day? Are they still able to work? Or how is it limiting their ability to um, get through a day? Diagnostics wise, um, we already talked about it, So I'm going to I'm not going to stop reading things backwards. Um, chronic pain, um, chronic back pain, better or worse, is going to be similar to acute back pain um, or at the same as uh, acute back pain. Just, you know, there should be less pain, improved range of motion, um, ability to do those day-to-day -day tasks. 
And especially because this is a chronic thing, there's a there's a strong um, focus on how's their day to day going? Like, how are they able to manage things? And of course, it'll be worse if the pain's worse, the range of motion and movement's worse, or if there's a de decreased ability to complete their daily activities or their activities of daily living. Um, overall, what we do for these patients is we want to look, instead of more of a short-term fix, we're looking for a long-term uh, management. So we're going to do things like physical therapy is so key. And, um, you know, I was actually a very, and I, you know, I have not necessarily back issue. I didn't do it for back issues, but I did it for um, other joint issues. And I was a real big skeptic when my um, orthopedic doctor was like, hey, you should go and do physical therapy. I was like, how is it going to help? Um, and it made all the difference to really be focused in on, um, uh, what do you call it? Working on that muscle strengthening and pretty much making the areas of my body that aren't having joint issues, making them stronger. It can make a big difference. So, um, and I saw a lot of people when I was getting, doing my physical therapy, working on their back, um, and just saw what a big difference it can make for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, the, some people may balk at it because it just seems like how is exercise going to help? Because um, for most people with back problems, it seems like exercise makes it worse. But it's all about doing the right exercises and strengthening the right areas so that your back doesn't have to bear so much load. Um, stretching is key. So um, with physical therapy, they'll usually give stretches too, but um, also just learning good stretches because uh, the back can get very stiff, which can make the pain worse. And we do pain management. And a lot of patients with chronic low back pain and uh, or chronic back pain in general, um, you know, they end up um, working with a pain management specialist because they have a lot of issues with um, chronic pain and um, issues, you know, just living day to day. So they usually need to be managed on multiple medications and, um, you know, they have to go through on and off periods with some opioids or trying different um, alternatives because eventually they can build up a pretty big tolerance. And then using assistive devices as needed because they can have some safety issues. So um, we can treat their pain. We usually start with the least invasive first. So we do things like NSAIDs, we might do other analgesics like opioids, um, and then other pain alternatives are going to be things like muscle relaxers, um, a gabapentin, which is nerve pain medicine, something else you're going to see used, and you don't have to know in depth about these, um, but uh, different types of antidepressants can also help with nerve pain. So sometimes we use those as well. And then um, we can do steroid injections. These can help depending on you know, the injury, the issue. Um, these can uh, provide a lot of pain relief where they might not need as much, um, you know, regular around the clock medicine. It doesn't last forever, but they can get um, steroid injections uh, at least a few times. Um, weight reduction helps. Anything we can do to um, put off the uh, like decrease the strain of the back is would be ideal. Um, heat and cold application, just like for acute back pain, and everyone's a little bit different on what they prefer. Some people like the heat, some people like the cold. Um, if it doesn't get better, then we can do surgery. Um, and there are some alternatives like biofeedback, acupuncture, you know, there's a lot of people that try, they really don't want to have to do surgery. So they'll try a lot of things. We'll talk more about the surgery, but just know the surgery is a hard thing. It may seem like, oh yeah, the surgery is a fix. And it, it is, and it isn't like, um, the, what the surgery does, like most of the surgeries that we're going to talk about for back pain, what they do is they provide stability. They don't really fix the issue, but they, um, they help to improve some of the symptoms and improve range of motion and like pretty much that quality of life. Um, but something that's very true is you're messing around with the back, you're messing around with the spine. And sometimes you fix one problem, but create another one. Um, so when I used to work at a hospital that did primarily just back surgeries, um, um, you know, what I would see is a lot of patients would come in, like they're having symptoms, like, like one set of symptoms, they would get their back surgery, those symptoms went away, but then they had a new symptom or something different on the other side, or um, it's not always very, um, uh, very cut and dry. And for most patients that have chronic back pain, um, you know, you talk to patients that have had back surgery, many of them have had multiple back surgery. So I'm not here with any agenda or saying back surgeries don't work, but it's just, it's not necessarily like a quick, easy fix. There's a lot of recovery and it can cause other issues. So just making sure that the patients have all their information and know all of their other alternatives. They also use things like TENS units and things like that for, um, like we talked about for acute. 
Um, so as the nurse encourage stretching or yoga, um, you know, so movement helps. So it may seem like these patients, especially patients with back pain, they don't want to move. It hurts. It's hard. Like it's really, um, it's so difficult sometimes to get them out of bed. Cause they're like, Oh, I feel like I'm in a position. I'm finally comfortable. Um, but staying in bed, is like the worst thing. This is kind of like what I talked about with my husband, where I talked about where he'll like let, like his back's hurting. So he'll like go to sleep and he'll um, lay in bed for like 12 to 14 hours. And then he wakes up and he's like hurting so bad. He's like, I don't get it. And it's like, well, you've been laying in the same position for so long. It's the same. Um, like when I did have some back pain, most of the time it was because I was sitting at a desk for way too long or like during COVID. Oh, it was horrible. Um, and so um, that's why um, you definitely want to be consider, consider that we don't need to be straining or doing something strenuous, but gentle movements, regular repositioning is good for back pain issues. Uh, we want to teach them the body mechanics that we learned about with acute back pain, um, teach them again, regular activities throughout the day with rest and um, regular pain assessments are going to be priority. All right, that's it for chronic back pain. The next is the degenerative disc disease. I'll see you for that one.